is indeed a very wonderful day, the first Sunday after resurrection. A, a week after resurrection, a day like this, Jesus revealed himself to Thomas. A day like this, 2050 something years ago, in reality, Jesus revealed himself to Thomas, and Thomas confessed that indeed you are God. Because no human being, no human being can defeat death. No human being can do this. Hallelujah. Mm. And today we have come to say in agreement with Thomas, we are not doubting, we have believed, even though we've not seen, that Jesus is God. He is God of our hopes, the God of our life, the God of our destiny, the owner of our soul. May the evil one see and respect and back off. The one who defeated him 2,000 years ago is with us. We give him all the praise. The theme for this month is divine intervention. And the theme for the year, the general theme for the year is the year of the supernatural. We have believed that this life is more than what we see. There are many things happening as a result of that which is behind the scene that we do not see. And there are other spirit beings involved in the affairs of man. We don't see them with our eyes, but they are. There are angels, so are demons. There is Jesus, our God, and so Satan. It amazed me, though, when Jesus was talking about we serving God or someone serving two masters. I didn't want to use the we for someone serving two masters. He said, you cannot serve God. And then he said, and money. You cannot serve God. I was expecting him to say, you cannot serve God and the devil, but he said, you cannot serve God and money. This means the devil is not, you know, up to God's standard in the equation here. Because people go for money, but the devil comes for us. And God knows the devil does not have power until he allows him. And because man is free moral agent or agency, God does not rule over our wills and we have free will to make choices. And so money becomes more dangerous. And sadly, the devil is in charge of the systems of the world. And so if one falls victim to the love of money, he falls into the hands of the enemy. May God deliver us. Amen. And so we are believing God for the supernatural. God is involved in our day-to-day -day affairs. The angels are created to serve our purpose. But on the other hand, Satan and his demons are also forcing their way through. And we are going to see it's everywhere in the Bible. And that is why you have to weigh and find out who is the mightiest. And so if you are wise, you choose the strongest. The Bible says no one goes to a strong man's house unless he is stronger than the person to first bind him. I have an announcement to make. God is the omnipotent. God is the all-powerful. And Jesus is the all-powerful. If you read my books, you see Jesus is omnipotent. The all-powerful. And if you have him by your side, then the saying is true. If God be for you, if God be for you, who can be against you? No one. And so whether you like it or not, it will not change the fact that there are forces 
operating and making decisions that influence lives. And you must know and understand. But in as much as we know that we are believing God for the supernatural, and that God will show up in our affairs visibly or in any way that we can experience and know that this is God. This month, we are believing him for his intervention. We have believed God for refreshing. And that there are times you 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 give up on yourself and suddenly you suddenly you begin to feel revive all again no one is there no one is saying anything but it's like uh, uh, all the burden has been taken away this is a divine refreshing something god is doing on you that no one is involved we have believed god january for divine refreshing we came to february and we believe god for a reproductivity that we may bear fruit again. We may be successful and fruitful. We may succeed again and again and again. And last month, divine acceleration, we believe God for a divine speed to overtake. Even though people might have had the opportunity to go ahead, but we will never, we will never remain failures. We will never remain backward. And for the Bible says we are the head and not the tail. And so no matter how far they might have gone, using devices, de de deception, and all sort of counterfeit things to rob us of our right, when God comes in the situation, he turns things around. He gives us divine energy and moves us ahead and bring us to where we are supposed to be. That our strength, our education, our beauty, our pocket cannot bring us. And all these, the month will pass, but they will leave something with us. And today we are believing God, this month, for divine intervention. When we talk about intervention, we are talking about Someone setting in, setting in between two things, like uh, 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 some, uh, 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 someone who comes in as a divider to stand in to defend, to see to it that things are done properly among the two. And we are believing God for divine intervention. We will take our Bible reading, our first Bible reading from the book of Mark. My wife will help us read. And if it is God's will, uh, we will still read uh, other scriptures. Uh, Julia will help us read if it is God's will from Romans chapter 7 verse number 15 coming or from 14 coming. My wife will read actually in the book of Mark, we have to read from verse number 1 to 20. So... When you have your free time, you can do that. But today we are reading to five. Chapter five, verse number one to five. Mark chapter five, verse number one to five. And Julia might probably read from Romans chapter number seven, uh, verse number 14 coming or 15 coming. Let's read Mark chapter five, verse number one coming. I'm reading Mark chapter 5 verse 1 coming. Mm -hmm. Then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of Gadarens. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately then immediately they met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no one could bind him, not even with chains. Because he had often been bound with shackles and chains. Mark those things if the Bible belongs to you. No one, no human, not the prime minister, not the king, no one could bind him or could tame him. For he has often been bound and chained. And with his own hand, he would tear the chain 
He will break the chain. Oh, Father, the revelations that are coming, I pray. Read, my dear. I'm Read. reading the uh -huh. verse 4 again. Uh -huh. Because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and, and the shackles broken in pieces. Hmm. Neither could anyone tame him. Five. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. Amen. May the Lord add his blessings upon the readings of his word. Amen. This is the reading of the Lord. And it is my prayer that he opens the doors of your heart and grant you understanding. So you will know eh, that this life is not just about what you see with your eye. It goes far more than what you see with your eye. Last time, Cain killed Abel. <laughs> the devil was there. <laughs> Last time, Esau said, oh, just take my, 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 my birthright. The devil was there. What we say and what we do. There are always an engineering agent behind what happened in the realms of the spirit that manifest in our lives. It is my prayer God will help you understand. The Bible said this man. The Bible did not mention his name. But he is someone who was born into a family. Someone who was once being celebrated at his birth, people celebrated. There was joy. Someone who lived. What the Bible did not mention was whether he married, he had children or not. The Bible was silent about that. But he was a man. He wasn't a child. He was a man. But demons, evil spirit possessed him. I have said many times to you, angels do not possess. Meaning they have taken over you, taken over your will, living in the inside of you, directing you the way you should go. Angels don't do that. But demons do. They possess your body. Because the Bible makes it clear and that this man, no one could tame him. No human being had what it takes to stand him. Because his strength was not just natural ability. His strength was spiritual. There was a spirit being who was involved in his affairs. And for that matter, no one could contend against spirit being. This is what Apostle Paul said in Ephesians. For our wrestle is not against flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. If your wrestle is against flesh and blood, you might weigh the person and know whether you can bring him down or not. Mm -hmm. But we are talking about spirit here. The man has been possessed, meaning he has been robbed of his will by that which is stronger than him. And he does not have a will anymore to decide what he wants to do with his life. He was living outside the city among the tombs. It smells. Things were not good there. But he didn't like it, but he had to be there because the spirits wanted him there. And on top of it all, he did not want to go through pain. But he cannot stop cutting himself, causing himself a pain. It is my prayer, it is my prayer. And that God will show up in the life of someone who is doing that which you know you don't have to do it. Uh, that which you are going through, you know this is not of God. It is my prayer God will show up. In the name of Jesus. The reason why we need divine intervention is that this man had lovers. He had family. But no one could help him. There are times in our lives, human beings cannot help us. For it is written, 
There are things which are impossible with man. But what is impossible with man? There is someone who can fix it. That is God. No man could help this man. Ask yourself, what would be his future? If no one was able to help him, it means his life was supposed to be like this for all lifetime. Amen. Thank God for Christ. Thank God for Jesus. And I have come to tell you, no matter what you are going through, if people have given up on you and you cannot help yourself, let your need decide. For someone is interested in your case, his name is Jesus. And he is still the same today as he was yesterday. And he will be the same Amen. tomorrow. His name is Jesus. Amen. Sometimes we cannot help ourselves. We know what we, we are doing. We don't want to do. Like Romans chapter 7 says. Apostle Paul said. The good I want to do I cannot. I want to do good. I desire to do good. I know this is good. And this is what I want. I don't want this because I know it is bad. And that many a times I find myself doing what I don't want. Hey! And then I came to know it is no more me. It is no more me. Something has taken hold of me. And that I thank God for Christ. I thank God for Christ. And when Christ showed up. The testimony of Apostle Paul is, I can do all things. I can do all things. I can do all things. I don't know which area of your life you have been subjected by the enemies to do things contrary to God's way for your life. I don't know what the enemy is doing concerning the children. I don't know what is going on in your life. But one thing is for sure, Christ by your side. Rise by your side. You will be the last to laugh. Yes, this man, if you continue to read, if you read verse number 20, the Bible says he was an evangelist. One man preached in 10 cities. When he met Jesus and Jesus left town, he took over the entire 10 cities. Name it. Turn out, Antwerp, Ghent, name it, Shalowa, name it, Brazos, 10 cities, one man. He went to 10 cities and preached the gospel. And the devil knew this and he possessed him. I hereby declare concerning you, any strong hand and strong man in your life, from your paternal line, from your maternal line, that has subjected the entire family and your life and your destiny hell, to slavery, I command it to lose its hold on you in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, something must be done. And Jesus is the strongest. If you continue to read from verse number 6, the Bible says, when the man saw him, the man who cannot be tamed, the man who always wanted to be among the tombs, uh, the, tombs uh, the man who could not help himself, was able to drive mm -hmm. the demons and knelt before Jesus. He was able by divine energy the presence of Jesus in your life will change everything. The presence of Jesus must shake off every satanic oppression on your life. Every satanic oppression in your family. By the resurrection power, I command every grave and tomb tool that is causing you ill to lose hold and be broken in the name of Jesus. Because the devil is interested not in people who don't have a cause. The devil is interested in the children in our lives because they have a future. The devil is interested in your marriage because it has a future. The devil is interested in your life because you have a future. Today, I have come to tell you, Christ by your side, the devil stand defeated. Jesus name. He uses many strategies. Hmm. The man could not help himself. What am I trying to say? There must be a divine intervention because sometimes the people who could help you 
might be happy you are going through what you are going through because they think they must get the chance you have. Hmm. It will take God who knows his plan for your life to set in and make things well again for you. May the Lord set in the family. May the Lord set in your finance. May the Lord set in your finance. May the Lord set in your health. May the Lord set in your ministry, your calling. Oh, set in your destiny. May the Lord set in. Let there be a divine intervention. There were people to help the man. But for whatever reason, they refused. And sometimes it is because they knew they, could, they have done their best and their best was not good enough. Family left him. He was crying, but they could be eating. Friends left him. He was crying, but they were going about their business. What I don't know was whether he was married. Everybody left him to be so for the rest of his life. But God did not appoint us for destruction now. God did not appoint us for evil. And for that matter, I declare there will be a divine intervention in that situation concerning you. No matter who is involved, let there be a divine intervention. Because the one who is setting in holds the heart of kings. And no matter how powerful, how influential, uh, how great, uh, uh, whatever that person may be you are dealing with, he holds the heart of the king. Yes. And I know at the end of the day, you will be the last to love. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There was, there was a cause. The cause was this man had been honored. He will be an evangelist. And the devil had possessed him. I don't know how it happened. But the moral lesson here is that there is something going on in people's life they themselves don't even know. This is the reason why Jesus came. You know how Satan, the devil, robbed Adam through deception of his right. Adam did not know that there was a contract. Adam did not know that it was a butter trade. He thought, I just listened to him. I just did what he was asking me to do. And that act, single act, subjected him to the devil as a slave. It did not just subject him. The Bible says a slave and his property and his children, they all belong to his master. If you read Romans chapter 6, verse number 16, the Bible says, if you obey someone, a slave, you are slave to the person. Hmm. But he was deceived. Eve mm -hmm. was deceived. But they were not forced. This is where God cannot do much. They were not forced. Mm -hmm. The devil cannot touch you against God's will. They were not forced. But he used manipulation. And that is why we need to know the word of God, the truth. So that when the enemy speaks to us opposite God's will, mm -hmm. we will be like Jesus and say, Satan, get thee behind me. Because we know it came from the pit of hell. Mm -hmm. We need to know the word of God to be able to stand our ground and exercise our right through faith mm -hmm. as a shield to combat the darkness of the enemy. Mm -hmm. But if you do not know the will of God for your life, you don't read the word of God. You may not know your stand. The enemy took advantage and robbed Adam and Eve of their rights. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, God wanted them to be saved, to be helped. But it's not possible because that act separated them from God. Mm -hmm. And so God had to bring the case 
to a legal court. If you read Daniel chapter 7, verse number 21 coming, the Bible says there is a court. And God sat and brought judgment on behalf of the saints. Read Daniel chapter 7, you will see. And so there was to be a case. And the sad thing is, there was no one to represent the man in that court. Because a man and his posterity are all slaves. And they cannot stand in the court and defend their right. Because they don't have right. They don't have will. But we thank God for his manifold wisdom. God for seeing all these things. Had made provision as we read last Sunday. The lamb was prepared before the foundations of the world. God, because of his word, he did not create man to be ruled upon. Man was not created to be ruled upon. Man was created to rule over everything, but not man. And so it was illegal for the devil to rule over man. Ha, ha. It is illegal today. And I declare concerning your life, any satanic government and platforms and, and, and altars in your father's house that operate that has your name on board, I am smash it in the name of Jesus. Amen. You don't, you, you, I pray you understand this message. And so, God who foresaw all these things made provision. Ha! God took God out of God. And he stood there. And God took God. And he stood there. And it, it, because God came out of God. God came out of God. And there were three. We don't have more than three of this kind. From Jesus' interpretation in Matthew chapter 28. He said the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We don't know any other. But when you see any of them. You have seen the three. If you see the sun, you have seen the tree. If you see any of them, you have seen the tree. But it is only Jesus that is made visible for the eye to see. Cut this revelation. And now, God came out of God. And the one who sat is called the Father. And there was another God himself. And he walked himself out again. And there was another God, the Spirit. And he said, you, who came out of me first, you will go and take the flesh. And that time when it comes, you will represent man. And so the Bible says in 1 John chapter 2, that Jesus is our judge. He is our lawyer. He is our advocate. He represents us in heaven. And he is interceding for us. I thought I heard some amen. 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 When there is no one to stand in for man in heaven, Satan can, but there was no representative for man. And so if you read Hebrews chapter 2, the Bible says he did not find it difficult to call us his brother. Because he was coming to save us, not angels. And for that matter, it was necessary for him to have our flesh. So he will identify himself with us. That is why, few days ago, he died. Because God cannot die. But he has to come and pay the price. So he took our place, according to Isaiah 53, he took our place and intervened where we could not do anything for ourselves. Like the songwriter said, he paid the debt he did not owe. And we owe and we could not pay. But he has paid it all in full. Jesus is our representation and our representative in heaven. And he is interceding for us right now. I don't know what the enemy has robbed you of. I don't know which area of your life he has taken interest. And the Bible says if you continue to read from verse number 7 of that Mark chapter 5. The demons said to Jesus, we are comfortable in this region, don't kick us out. We want to live here, don't kick us out. We beg you, let us be here. 
In some families, the enemy has so much interest. People will not cross a certain age. In some family, the enemy has certain interests. You can have all children, but you cannot marry. In some family, the, the enemy has certain interests. You can marry, you can have children. You can live all, but you cannot have money. Today, we appeal to our lawyer, Jesus, to bring an end to every uh, 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 satanic oppression in our father's house and our mother's house. In the name of Jesus. Because of time. Because of time. Because of time. We will take it up. Next Sunday. We need divine intervention. I don't know how this man ended up in the hands of the enemy. Had it not been by divine intervention, who could have helped him? I don't know where and what. But we invite the Lord. The Bible says in the name of Jesus, every demon. Yes, there are demons. That is why we need the name of Jesus. The Bible says, at his name, every knee must bow. Amen. May the Lord's presence show up in your case. Jesus. So no one can stand opposing you. Amen. Everyone must come down. Amen. Begin to thank God for his word. In the name of Jesus. Zechariah.